what's going on guys welcome back today we are doing vikings and we're going to be doing episodes eight and nine so the last episode got to see a lot of stuff happening some confusing things that have you thinking uh is that really going to happen so after the thorough thorough butt whooping um behind the hands of rollo you know um as I said, man, Rolo needs to go. It's time. Uh, but I, I still, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm still not sure. Like, there's this nagging feeling in the back of my mind. Thinking this is uh, some sort of play that he's doing. Like, he's playing into their hands, learning about them. I'm wondering if this is a, if this is something that they planned from the start. You get what I'm saying, and unless, but it still wouldn't explain why he killed the the Vikings at the camp. Like, is this something that they knew about that they were gonna sacrifice their lives for? Would I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because I just, even though, you know what I'm saying? Because from season one, you know, Rolo's character arc has been, you know, his, you know, from he betrayed Ragnar and then with Yalborg and then he came back and, you know, he had this great redemption arc of him getting back into the good graces of Ragnar and stuff like that. I mean, him screaming at Rolo from the boat, man, you can see that he was screaming from, it, it, it was heartfelt and then that though was coming from the bottom of his guts, man. Like, this is what you do. This is really what you do. To me, after I saved you, you know what I'm saying. So it's like it, it, it was, it was heartfelt. It was heartfelt, you know. And now they have freaking Aether Wolf and and um the 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 um the older son taking this pilgrimage, right? I don't know what King Edward is up to with them. Like, why did he send him on this pilgrimage doing 12 miles a day along with this priest going to, uh, you know, um, that's crazy. That's crazy. That That is a long time he's sending and then he's going to take them on by himself. But then he goes to Mercia and, and well, not really Mercia. He takes this meeting with somebody who's their bloodline, you know what I'm saying, um, of the, the bloodline of the kingdom. Um, and basically the guy basically handed him the kingdom in, you know, in not so many words, basically give him the crown of his mom and say, listen, I think you can lead Mercia into the future. Join in both Mercia and, um, where do you at again? Essex. Is it Essex? Essex. So <laughs> I don't remember, but you you guys know what I'm talking about. His kingdom, joining it with mercy and rule over both. Um, King Egbert doesn't necessarily like um, the other one. I, why am I drawing blanks on these guys? The other king, um, Judas' dad, right? So it's, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, what should I really think about what King Egbert is up to. He's crazy, yet very cunning. You know what I'm saying? He's very sly with the things that he does, and he has a meaning to everything that he does. So you really do have to pay attention to him. But for some reason, um, Floki has a dream about freaking Oslog. What does it mean? Why is Harbord back? At, uh, you know what I'm saying? Why is Harbord back in the village? in Kattegat who knows who knows because this guy he just goes around like messing the, he, they're saying he's Odin I don't know I don't know man but anyways let's jump into these episodes man and let's see what how they how they're gonna do um going into um the second act of the season basically um we're like I think we're mid-season now so we'll see how it goes see you guys for the review All right, we are back. Just watch episode eight and nine of season four of Vikings, man. Really, really good episodes. We lost Quinthrit 
and Aether Wolf's baby. I don't even know if he knew that Quintred was pregnant when he left, before he left. So I don't know how that's going to go down, if he's going to find out, you know. But this, this pilgrimage they got to, to Rome and whatever. And, um, and they got their blessing and stuff from the Pope and all that good stuff. I don't know how that's going to play. I, I like that he said that, um, there was a monk standing beside the kid when he was walking up. So I'm guessing that it was Athelstan that he saw. Um, there's a lot of foreshadowing stuff when it comes on to this series. So you really do have to pay attention to certain things that are being said and also being shown to you. Okay, so Ragnar came up with this brilliant idea to pick up the boats basically over the cliff over the cliff and then drag it across logs, which is is not far fetched. This is something that can be done. You know what I'm saying? Um uh, it's just the difficulty of it, you know what I'm saying, was what really surprised me. Um it was the difficulty of it that really surprised me that he actually suggested it and nobody complained. They're like, yeah, let's do it. King Ragnar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you know, if it was us, we'd have been like, what is wrong with this fool? <laughs> you know what I mean? But they, they, those Vikings, they're so devoted, man. Um, they believe in him so much that if that man told them, yo, this is what we going to do, no matter how difficult it is, if they like, yo, we going to create something to get, to Valhalla by ourselves while we're still alive. Let's do it. They'll be like, King Ragnar, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about this um their culture, you know what I mean? So um well Count Odo is no more. He got what was coming to him. Um I mean that whole situation that went on over there in Paris seemed kind of rushed to me in certain ways but it is what it is um it wasn't that intriguing for them to 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 stretch it out that much so it was fine i didn't find you know any problem with it just it just felt a little like they rushed through it to get to that point it was being set up but at the same time the way out they did it in episode eight it just kind of like it was kind of like i didn't expect it to go that way where how they outed him and stuff like that. It just felt like a part of it. Like something was missing. You know. It, it just felt like something was missing. From him being in. The, from him coming from the meeting. To being whipped. And stuff like that. Like it just it just felt a little bit anticlimactic. Like I wasn't ready. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But anyways it happened. So no love lost. He wasn't my favorite character. At all in Paris. So um. Um, right now the situation is arising where they're trying to prepare for the second attack, which Rolo keeps warning them. He's like, listen, as long as my brother is alive, there is a threat. So we can't be talking about, oh, congratulations, for victories and stuff. I believe in celebrating small victories, but you got to keep in mind that, you know, the, the, the battle or the war is not won yet, right? It's just that we just won a small battle, you know, so cool beans but at um the situation going out he's go you see when he said he's not taking it anymore he feels more poisoned because that's what withdrawal does to you when you when you were on drugs and then you stop taking that drugs you're gonna go through that the period that's gonna be the worst but you will come out the better for it you know what i'm saying not that you're not gonna still have those urges because you do still have those urges but you won't it won't be as potent as it was before way way when you were addicted to whatever you were taking so that withdrawal is killing him right now with the hallucinations the sweating the shakes all that stuff is symptoms of withdrawal so i know that for sure not that it ever happened to me you know, I've just seen it so many times, not um, with friends and you know what I'm saying? So it's, I've seen it, you know, so I noticed it and he's doing a very good job of acting that out. So shout, I, as I said, man, I've been shot. I shout out the acting in this episode, in these two episodes of the children actors. They're doing a very good job on the show. It's not very easy to find good children actors nowadays. Remember, most of them are extremely cheesy. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's why they can only be on Nickelodeon and Disney and the, and those channels because once they go to the big screen, they're absolutely horrible. Like it's very few of them you see um, that really excel when they go to you know go on the big movie scenes, big TV shows when they leave you know like Nickelodeon and Disney. Like I give you a few examples. Like Anne Hathaway is a big example of talking about talent she's had that talent man i loved her in the movies back then i loved her now lindsay lohan she fell off you know what i'm saying um you know some of them you just don't know where they are today <laughs> you know so it is what it is but anyways um yeah man so i'm looking forward to see now that they're back in the river upstream what is the plan now to plan is to go to get and he's like yo i didn't come here for paris i came to kill rollo you know what i'm saying so we're gonna see what happens but here we are again back in the same situation king Egbert not taking the crown and he's you know talking off to king ayla and and, and um and judith now you know the situation that's going on in Wessex right now is so it, it's such a good story to the point where it the whole thing is a main story um but the the thing that is happening over in Paris feels more like a side story and king what's happening in Wessex feels so much more like the main story that we need to be paying attention with because all we watch Ragnar do and his crew do was pull boats <laughs> you know for this entire pretty much both episodes so um so here so here we are so the, i think that was the most interesting thing that i saw during these two episodes of what was going on in wessex was the most not necessarily the most important but the most interesting the other thing that happened that i want to talk about oslog and harvard right this dude game this chick i don't care if he's hold odin whoever he is you get what I'm saying? Because he all but denied that he was a god. You know what I'm saying? Like, pretty much everything came out of his mouth was game. You know what I'm saying? He's like, listen, man, don't don't try to tie me down. I'm a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, man, you know what I mean? So um, she just felt lost and stuff like that. And I think Sigurd um, is going to be spilling the beans when daddy gets back home. He's going to be telling him. Telling Ragnar everything. So, um, great things, man. Great things. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, man, these two episodes were great, which I could watch more right now, but I can't because I got to do another reaction before. Um, it's time for me to sign off for tonight. So, thank you guys so much for watching this. Leave a like, leave a comment in the comment section, and also subscribe if you're new, man. It's more Vikings to come. Thank you guys so much. Gratitude is never enough, man. Remember that. Terabyte out. Peace.